Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last couple of lectures of EC 2026, Introduction to Signal Processing, we discussed the reconstruction of continuous time signals from discrete time samples of those signals. But we restricted our discussion to sinusoids where we had precise mathematical formulas. In this lecture, we'll talk about practical digital to analog reconstruction schemes that apply to general signals. So we have samples at discrete points in time, and we need to fill in the blanks somehow. We can imagine drawing lines to connect the dots of the different samples. If we think about that in the image domain, that would correspond to the bilinear interpolation formula used by Photoshop to expand images. What's called the staircase interpolation on the right is also called a zero order hold, where we just take the sample and hold it until the next sample appears. And this is traditionally the first stage of digital analog conversion for audio signals, although this is just the first stage. Now, to start reasoning about this, I'm going to make a slight change from the previous slide. Instead of having the hold start at a particular time instance and keep going like this, we'll shift things around so the hold is predicting the future a bit. It's starting half a sample before. So everything we we're talking about still applies. It just happens in practice half a sample later. If you think about something like this in two dimensions, you can think about this as like the square pixels on an LCD display. Actually, yes, I know I technically just said liquid crystal display display. Here we have an example where we're using a sample rate of 200 samples per second. So the Nyquist frequency for that system is 100 hertz. The frequency of the wave itself is 83 hertz, which is pretty close to 100. So we're pushing pretty close to the edge here. Now, a lot of people think that digital audio sounds bad because they're listening to these stair step reconstructions. But that's not what you're listening to. That's just the initial stage. The stair step reconstruction is passed through an analog filter operating in the continuous time domain that then smooths out those stair steps. And if you build an ideal filter, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you can exactly reconstruct the sinusoid by filtering these stair steps. Now, remember I said ideal filter. That filter is actually impossible to build in practice. So there may be a good reason to oversample. So here we're sampling at 800 hertz. The stair step waveform already starts to look more like a sine wave than what we had on the previous slide. So as far as your reconstruction filter goes, this continuous time analog filter that you need to build, you can ease up on the design requirements of that filter. But I want to emphasize that this sequence of numbers here at the faster sample rate does not contain any more information than this sequence of samples at the lower sample rate. In fact, you could start from these samples, use digital signal processing to create these samples, and then send those out your analog reconstruction filter. Let's form a mathematical model for the digital to analog conversion process that consists of taking some generic pulse, P of T, and what we're going to do is we're going to take that pulse and shift it to land at each of the sample points. And then we're going to weight that pulse by the value of the sample at that point. And then we sum all of those up. So this kind of zero order hold could be modeled using the square pulse. That's one for T between minus capital TS over two and TS over two. So our reconstruction consists of a bunch of these time shifted interpolation pulses weighted by the sample values and spaced according to the sampling interval. So the pulse corresponding to a zero order hold is shown here in the upper left. If we instead use this triangular pulse that goes from minus TS to TS, that would correspond to linear interpolation. Now there is an ideal pulse that would perfectly reconstruct your signal from the samples. That's called a sync function. Now I want to emphasize ideal because you can't actually implement this in practice because a sync function runs infinitely in the negative time direction and the positive time direction, and nobody can wait that long. You can think of this parabolic pulse in the lower left corner that's running from minus 2TS to 2TS, 
as being an attempt to approximate this sync function that's better than the triangle pulse, but is still practical. Now, I should mention that other than the square pulse in the upper left-hand corner, everything else you see in practice is probably being used in some purely digital signal processing-based interpolation scheme where you're trying to increase the sample rate inside the computer. It will be very difficult to try to implement analog circuitry to implement these functions and impossible to implement this one. Traditional electric circuits courses will cover the kinds of filters that are easy to build in the analog domain. Here's an example of a reconstruction of a signal with a triangular pulse. You can see here that there's a pulse here and a pulse here. What I'm drawing in red here shows a couple of pulses that you then add up in order to try to form the waveform. Here in the lower left corner, you can see the individual triangular pulses, although it's a little hard to follow. Once you add all of them together, you get this linear interpolation that you see on the right, which of course isn't doing a good job of capturing these peaks and valleys. So let's talk about the sync function. It has a sign function in the numerator, so it has an oscillatory structure but it has this division by t in the denominator, so it winds up decreasing in amplitude the further you get away from zero going in either direction, and it has the symmetry. Now at t equals zero, sine of zero is zero, and the denominator is zero, so you have a zero over zero kind of form. You can use L'Hopital's rule to show that this converges to one as t goes to zero. So we wind up just defining it as being 1 at 0. Also, if you look at the zeros of the sine function, you'll see that these zero crossings happen at the sample points. So when you add up all of these pulses, if you look at a particular point in time that corresponds to when a sample was taken, only the pulse that lands at that particular time contributes to the value at that time because all of the other shifted pulses hit that point at their zero crossings. This so-called band-limited interpolation procedure effectively reconstructs only the frequency components corresponding to a mega hat landing between minus pi and pi, and it tosses out all the other aliases. Now, the proof of this is beyond the scope of this class. We need material related to the continuous time Fourier transform to prove this. So we will wait on the proof until ECE 3084. Imagine I had this discrete time sequence here. What we'll do is we'll reconstruct the continuous time function by taking a sync function and plunking it at the origin, but scaling it by the value of the sample at that point. And then we'll do that for all of the other functions as well, moving them to the appropriate position and then scaling them appropriately. And then once we've added all of these up, we've reconstructed the original function. Now, there's something sneaky hiding in here. Notice that these are drawn with little arrows. In EC3084, we talk about a weird thing called the Dirac delta function. It is deeply strange. It's not even actually a function. It's something called a generalized function. And in EC3084, we talk about how all this works using those Dirac delta functions. But we're not going to worry about that here. In EC3084, we show that that sync interpolation procedure corresponds to applying an ideal perfect brick wall low-pass filter in the omega continuous time domain. So it's as if we magically killed off all of these aliases that were in the omega hat domain. Now, it's impossible to build a perfect brick wall filter like that. So any practical reconstruction scheme is going to involve some engineering trade-offs. And remember, in the last couple of lectures, we always talked about sinusoids that were conceptually happening for all time. Of course, all the signals we might record or want to generate in real life have finite length. So technically speaking, none of those are band-limited. So any practical system has a little bit of aliasing going on, but we try to keep it to a minimum.